Okay, we are doing our HESI group video over pain. My name is Tao Nguyen. I'll be the patient, Rinda Fisher, who's a 35-year-old patient with two children, an infant and a four-year-old. And this is Alyssa Laughlin. I'm going to be the nurse who's training the student nurse. Hi, my name is Audrey Fowler, and I'm going to be the student nurse who Alyssa is going to be teaching. And we're going to start. children, especially my infant. I have to feed her every three hours and my bag is just killing me. Oh. Let's see what we can do about that. Okay. Did you have any patients? I did actually. She looked like she was in a lot of pain. You're right. What nonverbal behaviors was she doing that made you think that? Well, I noticed that she wasn't really looking at you when you were talking to her and then also she was kind of guarding her back and you could tell because she was wincing and bent over. So, I mean, those are kind of the things I did see when she came in. Okay, very good. You really want to notice when a patient is guarding an area. That definitely indicates pain. But not looking at me, does, that doesn't always indicate pain. So that sometimes no eye contact could have to do with anxiety or something else. But definitely notice the guarding. Very good job on that. Okay, thank you. So we're going to see her today? Yes, we are. We're about to go assess her right now. All right, you're good. Hi, Brenda. This is my nursing student, Audrey. Hi. She's going to help me today with asking me some questions. I'm just going to observe her. Okay. Okay. All right, Brenda, can you tell me what seems to be going on today? Yeah, my back hurts so much. It's like this lower back area. It hurts when I bend down and change the diapers for my infant and getting the formula. I just can't move like I used to. It's so hard with two children. Can you tell me what part of the day it hurts the most? Um, during the evening. After a long day of yes. doing all these activities? Yeah, after a long day of work and then coming home and then hearing a baby cry and getting up in the, in the night. It's, just, it's exhausting. Okay, can you tell me about, you know, what your sleep is like at night? Are you getting any rest? No, I can't sleep. The infant's always crying, so I have to wake up and take care of the baby, feed her, so I'm, I'm not getting any sleep. Okay. Um, can you tell me, on a scale of 0 to 10, what you would rate your pain at? A 7. A 7? Okay. Is it always a 7, or is it just right now? Right now, it's a 7. Okay. Has it ever been higher than that at home? Yes. When you wake up in the morning, what's your pain like? It's not bad, like a six, like five, a six. yeah, and then it gets worse throughout the night. Okay, all right. Can you describe your pain for me? What's it feel like? It's really dull and aching. Okay, good. And can you tell me what you do to relieve the pain while you're at home? Yeah, I put like a cold pack on. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long do you put it there? Two hours. About two hours? Okay. And you get rest when you do this? Yeah. Okay. Audrey, did you gather any information from this patient that would indicate that she's having more pain not related to the movement? Well, she did say that she wasn't getting enough sleep, so that could definitely be a cause of more pain and why it's not improving. Very good. Very good. Do you, can you tell me one appropriate nursing diagnosis for her? Um, she has acute pain related to stress on her muscles with movement. Very good. All right. I want you to give me one appropriate goal for her care plan. Um, that the next time she comes in or after her care plan is complete, that she reports a 1 on a pain scale of 0 to 10. Very good. I also want you to tell me one thing that she's doing at home as an intervention that we need to help her we need to give her instructions on how to change. She reported putting a cold compress on her back for two hours, which is not good. So it needs to be about 20 minutes at the most. And if it turns red, we need to tell her that she needs to take it off. Very good, very good. I'm gonna have you go in and give her her care plan now, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'm gonna be here discussing your care plan with you. Your doctor has suggested, actually is highly recommended that you take an over-the-counter um, anti-inflammatory, which can be Aleve or ibuprofen. And he recommends this for you, and you can just go buy it at Walmart or any pharmacy, and you can buy either the off-brand or the main-brand. They're the same thing. And also, I would like to talk to you about, you said you were...
putting a cold compress on for two hours. Actually, what you really need to do is alternate heat and cold in about 20 minutes, and if you notice it getting red, you really need to stop. And then when the redness goes away and you've waited for probably about 20 minutes, you can apply it again, and you need to alternate that throughout your, throughout your um, relieving of your pain. And so also another thing is I want to stress to you that you need to get more sleep. Your muscles need to rest. And you need to try to get more sleep. I know you have an infant at home. I know it's stressful. But even a nap during the daytime or when you put your kids down, take a nap along with them. And so that's what we really suggest for you. And we're going to hope that if you do come back in here, you can report that your pain has decreased by a lot. And when you're at home, it decreases as well when you wake up and towards the end of your day. Thank Any questions? You. Yeah, I do. Um, I have Tylenol at home. Can I use that for my pain? Well, actually, Tylenol is not an anti-inflammatory, so it, it won't help with actually relieving the infl inflammation in your muscles. So we do suggest that you take an anti-inflammatory, which will help. Okay, I have some um, buffered aspirin. I can purchase that. Is that all f is that also safe to use for my four-year-old son to use? Um, no, actually, aspirin has been known to be related to the cause of Bright syndrome in children, so I would not suggest you give your children aspirin. It's for you that's okay, but for your children, I would not give them aspirin. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Brenda, I know what we did for you last time didn't help your pain enough, but we're hoping that this is going to help you. This is a TENS unit. You're going to place these pads on your back around where it hurts. There's three of them. You're going to make sure you use plenty of this gel. It's kind of cold, but it's going to help these pads stay on. Before you place these pads, make sure it's clean. Okay, you want to wash the little area on your back. Mm -hmm. And then you use the cold gel, put these on, and then you're going to use these buttons. You can set the timer for 10 or 20 minutes. Either one is fine, whatever you have time for. It's going to send electrical impulses across your skin and make your muscles tense up and relax. And that'll help relieve your pain. Okay? All right. Thank you, nurse. You're welcome. Okay. Hopefully this helps. I hope it helps, too. We want to see you back with no pain. Mm -hmm. Okay? I just wanted to come in and explain a few things to you. But first, I just want to say that I'm so sorry that the other plans that we had for you didn't work out. And that I hope this one does. So, but... We are going to be using a PCA pump after your surgery tomorrow, and I'm going to teach you how to use it now because tomorrow when you get out of surgery, you're going to be groggy. So today I'm going to tell you a few things about your PCA pump, and if you have any questions, I'll answer them at the end, okay? Okay, first of all, your PCA pump, it has a set amount of milligrams that we're going to be giving you for the medicine, and you're going to be able to push a button whenever you feel like, you know, you're in pain. but it's going to be set to a certain limit, so you're only going to be given that much in the set time that it's recommended for, okay? And then you're going to have that button by your bedside, and so whenever you're feeling pain, you push it. And then, you know, when you're not feeling pain, you just don't push it because you'll need to use it later maybe for your pain because we can only give you so much in a certain time frame, okay? And so, is there anything you yes. question about? Can I overdose on it if I push it too much? No. There is a set amount of milligrams, and you'll be able to push it, and only a certain amount will come out each time. And once it gets up to that limit, you can't have any more. So you can sit there and push the button as many times as you want, but if you're already at that amount that you're supposed to receive, you won't get any more until the next time. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other questions? No. All right. Good. <laughs> I hope your surgery goes well. Thank you. Hey Brenda, since you weren't using PCA as much, the doctor has now prescribed Vicodin for you. Okay, so it's going to be a pill that you take instead of the IV. And it has both hydrocodone and acetaminophen in it. The acetaminophen is like Tylenol, and mm -hmm. it helps the hydrocodone last longer, so you don't have to take as many. Do you have any questions about the medication? Yeah, I'm also taking Colace, a stool softener. Can I still continue that? Yes, we want you to keep taking that until we notice a change in your bowel movements. Okay. All right. Thank you, nurse. Thank you. Did you hear about that patient? Yeah, Brenda? Yeah. Oh, man. She's on all kinds of She's been of using drugs. that PCA pump, like, as many times as she can. I know. And now she's off it. Probably could get some more pills. Well, you they just put her on, like, Vicodin. So, I mean, what? yeah. Oh, oh, my God. I hope she's not some drug addict. She's probably already addicted to her. 
I know, man, I hate drug addicts. Oh, Just in that case. I know, Randall. Like, oh. Come on, I need y'all to come somewhere more private, okay? Okay. Look, that is inappropriate. You do not need to be talking about patients right in front of their rooms. That could get us a lawsuit. Mm. Do y'all know what it means to be honest and true with your patients? kind of ethical issue that is? Yeah, yeah, with veracity. Yes, we need to use veracity. We need to protect our patients' confidentiality and be true with them. Don't be calling them drug addicts. That's not appropriate. Okay? Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So for the case outcome, Rinda gets discharged the next day and she comes back to the clinic in two weeks and she continues to take her NSAIDs and she also comes back with mild back pain. She feels better. She also practices new relaxation techniques for better control and the patient feels better. So that's the end of our video. So we hope you enjoy. And that's all. Thanks for watching.